The headline today across college sports, and this is expected, uh, but the NCAA will officially allow one-time transfers. And there are roughly 1,400 players in college basketball that are in the transfer por portal right now. They have until May 1st to jump into the portal if they're not already there. Um, and that's for fall and winter athletes. That includes football. But we are about to see free agency galore. And there are critics of this decision. There are those that are all for this decision. Uh, but regardless of what side of the fence you're on, we're about to find out just how much of free agency we're about to see and how much that it, if, if you're afraid of this, we're about to see why or why not? Uh, because the recruiting is going to pick up even more so over the next two weeks. Well, so this falls under a category I'm going to say a lot on this show, and that is two things can be true. Two things can be true with this. One, it absolutely makes sense for the student athlete. It's good for them, makes total sense, gives them more agency to make a decision and then uh, admit that it's a bad decision and go somewhere else and seek happiness in another program, at another school, for another coach, whatever it may be. Just like a coach who's getting paid can decide to leave whenever they want and go take another opportunity and go coach somewhere else. But here's the second part of this. This is not a universal good thing or a universal bad thing in my mind. It's good for the student athlete. It's bad for the sport. Um, there are a lot of things that we like about, we compare the NFL to the NBA in this respect. We as fans like the control the teams have over the athletes. We like that they have to play and perform to get paid, that they can get cut at any time. These are things that the Players Association would not like, and they've done a bad job of protecting their rights with this. Now that this is happening in college football, let's, let's keep it specifically to college football, men's college basketball at the, at the highest level, this opens up a free market to where it's going to, it's going to hurt the sport overall because the players are now going to have way too much control. What I mean by that is this isn't, now this is not going to be all the time. This could be a rare moment, but players can dictate to the coach exactly what's going to go on. Terms. If they're upset about getting benched in one game for loafing mm -hmm. or making a mistake, that player's immediately in their mind going to go back to, man, I had Bill Self recruiting me. I, I had these guys recruiting me out of high school. I came here to play for this guy because I thought that he wanted what was best for me, and I'm going to go. Now, there's going to be plenty of reasons to leave. Playing time. You know, guys are going to transfer down. We're seeing that a lot in the transfer portal. You know, Tennessee's lost transfers. They're all going down mm -hmm. a level for the most part because they weren't playing at Tennessee. That's great. You can go somewhere else and start, good. If you're a guy who's playing at a smaller school, you're doing well and you get a chance to go to Duke or North Carolina and finish out your career, great if you want to take that opportunity. But if you're a guy who goes somewhere, gets upset one time, and makes an irrational decision based on that and leaves, it weakens the sport. It weakens college coaches also. Now you could, on the flip side, say it strengthens those who are really good at building relationships and keeping guys happy, and it weakens some other coaches. But I just think it's a, it's a scenario where two things can be true. It's, it's what's right, it's what's best for the student-athlete, and if we're looking at what's best for the student-athlete, this fits the bill. It also weakens the sport. I, I, wonder, uh, yeah, I, I worry about the Wild West yep. uh, the element of it. And there's going to be a lot more of it. Too many people in it, and I think, I wonder about the math of it. For every kid that's got a reasonable reason to leave, um, how many are, getting, uh, are being impatient or are listening to bad advice, you know, uh, maybe know that they should stay or have an inkling that they should stay, but are hearing from parents or uh, relatives or friends, man, you got, you got to get out of there. They're not treating you right. You're not getting enough minutes. You're not getting enough shots. You're not getting enough whatever. Um, and there's a lot of bad actors in, in college sports uh, or, or hearing from a booster somewhere else. Uh, hey, if you come here, you're go or a coach somewhere else. Hey, if you come here, you get all these false promises that, that go on in, in certain kind of recruiting, and you're reopening that. Um, that said, you know, I also wonder about the future of it. I, I want a kid to be able to get out of a bad situation without huge consequences. But where do you draw the lines, and how do you shape the parameters for it? 
um, you know, after we see what happens here, could there be some good that comes out of it? And how do you shape those, those rules? It's a tricky situation. Mm -hmm.